Hi everybody, Harris here with iDownloadBlog and today we're taking a look at the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, specifically the M2 version, as we will talk about a couple features that are exclusive to this tablet, but then also a lot of features that are just common to the iPad in general, as well as iPadOS 16 in more particular. In this video, I will be going over the absolute beginner tips and tricks for the first couple minutes, and then a little bit more advanced features. So if you already know all the basics, go ahead and skip to the next section. Otherwise, we're gonna go over the very fundamentals of how to use this iPad in case you're brand new to the iPad or brand new to this iPad in particular. Okay, so starting off, there's basically two ways of turning on the iPad. You can press the power button, which you can find on the top right-hand side of the iPad, depending on how you're holding it, or you can just simply tap the screen. So you can use Face ID to unlock your iPad, or you can swipe up and type in your passcode. Now, once you're inside your iPad, of course, you swipe back and forth between pages just like this. If you wanna quickly control or change any settings on your iPad, you're gonna do that by swiping down from the top right-hand corner of your iPad. This is Control Center. You get access to Bluetooth, volume, Wi-Fi, do not disturb, settings like that. You can customize this by going into Settings and then Control Center, and you can add any toggles you want right from here. Super handy to customize it with your favorite quick settings. If you wanna get into your Notification Center to see all your notifications, swipe down anywhere from the left side of Control Center, so around the middle, and here you can get into your notifications. Now when you're in an application and you want to go home, you simply swipe up with a quick tap like that. You can also use the old-fashioned five-finger pinch to close an app just like that. Now if you quickly want to get back and forth between recent applications, you swipe back and forth from the right and left, and this will allow you to quickly get into your recent applications. That's very handy. If you wanna see a list of all of your recent applications, you do the similar swipe up as before, but this time you hold when you get to the middle instead of letting go. And then you can see all of your recent applications. If you wanna force close one because it's not working properly, you can swipe up and close it just like that. And you also have the ability to drag two applications over each other if you wanna create a multitasking window out of that, but there are other ways of getting this as well. If you wanna take a screenshot, you're gonna take the power button and the top volume button and click those at the same time. That'll create a screenshot. From there, you can go in, you can crop, you can mark it up by clicking the little pen button and using your finger or a pencil to annotate or draw on it. You can add shapes, you can add text by clicking the plus button. Or if you just wanna scan something on it, you can click this little live text button in the corner and then you can highlight something. So for instance, you can highlight this November here, translate it, search the web, and then you can click done and you have the option to save it to your photos app, save it to your files app, save it to a quick note. You can copy it and delete it, which is new, or you can just delete it. Now, if you wanna shut down your iPad, you're gonna do top button, bottom button, and hold the power button just like that. And then you can slide to power off. And finally, if you want to access Siri to look something up or have a request Siri to do something, you just hold down the power button just like that. Okay, next I want to do some more intermediate settings and customizations. So if you want to add cool stuff to your home screen like I have here, you can add widgets. Add widgets by holding down on your home screen and clicking the plus button. Choose the widget you want, choose the size you want, and click add widget. And then that'll add that to your home screen where you can drag it around to wherever you want. Now, if you wanna add fun custom widgets, you can download different apps. This one is Widgetsmith. When you have Widgetsmith, you go in and you create your own widget depending on what size you want, and you can customize it to be whatever you want. Images, clocks, wallpapers, uh, you know, photos, scores, weather, stuff like that. And then you go into the widget view, go down to Widgetsmith, add the size you just created, click add to your widget. And when you go in, you tap it, configure, and then choose the one that you just designed. And then you can have really cool custom widgets just like this on your home screen super easily. Next, say you're handing your iPad to a child or an irresponsible adult like yourself. Just kidding. Um, but you wanna stay locked into that one app. Sometimes I would use this in school for studying to make sure I didn't go to a different app. I would lock myself in one app. You can do this by going into settings and then accessibility and then find guided access and make sure that's turned on. Then you can go inside an application. You triple click the power button and there it'll pull up the options for guided access. You can choose what options you want down here, but then you can click start up the top right hand corner, enter a passcode, 
and then no matter how much you try, you cannot leave that app until you triple click, enter in the passcode, and click end. Next, there are four ways of getting into Quick Notes if you have a pencil or a stylus. The first is just to tap anywhere on your lock screen and you can start a Quick Note. Second, anywhere from Notification Center, tap and you can do a Quick Note. Third, you can add a Control Center widget to do a Quick Note. And finally, you can swipe up from the bottom right hand corner and you can start a Quick Note. Now technically some of these are quick notes and some of these are normal notes quickly, but you get the idea. There's four ways of doing that. Next, say you have a document and you want to quickly turn it into a PDF. This is actually pretty easy. So we'll just say we wanted to turn Apple's website into a PDF. Go to the share option, go to print, and then click the share button again, and then you can share it somewhere else, such as mail or files or wherever. And once you save it, it will now save as a PDF, which is really cool. Basically a print view PDF. So that's a great way to turn anything quickly into a PDF, where then you can annotate it, you can save it in your files for storage, you can do whatever you really want with it. Now next, if you want to turn anything into a PDF, you can do that very quickly by adding the note setting to your control center, which I showed you in the beginning. And then if you tap and hold on that, you can do new scan document. And from there, you can scan a document and once you have that scanned document, you can use it for annotation, you can use it for signing, uh, you can mail it to somebody else, you can just save it uh, for receipts or you know expenses, anything like that. But you can turn any document you have into a scanned document on your iPad very easily. Well, next I wanna talk about some cases and stands. So you may have been noticing this uh, iPad has been up on this kind of 30 degree angle. And this is actually using this crazy origami folio from Moft and they're the sponsor of this episode. So this snap float folio is awesome because as you can see, it's super thin, but it gives you the option of putting it in a bunch of different viewing options including a 3.6 inch floating option, which makes this something that you'd really wanna use next to your Mac in a floating design. But you can also put it in the Apple Pencil mode or a standard kind of 60 degree or 30 degree. So this is a fantastic folding origami case. They also make a snap-on hard shell for your iPad that still works with your Magic Keyboard or Smart Keyboard. So this is great for protecting your iPad and keeping your Apple Pencil locked in and secured while still using it with your existing keyboard and just giving you that extra protection. Now the magnets work perfectly through the case to make sure you never have to take it off because of the pass through smart connector on the back as well as its slimness that makes it compatible with the Magic Keyboard. If you want to check this out, I'll leave a link in the description with a coupon code as well as a Black Friday savings so you can save up to $60 and you can check that out down in the description. Okay, next I want to talk about five fee features of the iPad, uh, especially M2 iPad and then iPad OS 16 in general. So the first is the hover feature. So if you have the Apple Pencil with this iPad, you get what is the hover feature. And this basically allows you to turn your pencil into a mouse cursor for the iPad, which is really handy. For instance, if you're using this in different applications for note taking and you have the eraser, it'll show you what you're about to erase. So you never have to guess on what you are about to delete. So that's really handy. You can see it highlights the whole thing that you're about to erase. It also shows you a preview of your tool. So I can clearly see that this is a pen tool that's very small compared to say the highlighter, which shows up much bigger. So you can see that preview right there but it also has lots of other cool features too. If you're in Safari, you can hover over a tab and get a preview of that. So you can close it without having to open it and you can quickly skim through different tabs just like that. It also gives you a heads up of what you're about to click in any other aspect of the software. Now next is Stage Manager. So if you have this running iPadOS 16.2, you should have Stage Manager back to its full function. So you go into Control Center and then you go ahead and turn this on. Now the first thing you can do is tap and hold this and you get customizations. You can choose whether or not you want to show the recent apps on the left hand side and the dock on the bottom. Um, I like this off, but you can always customize this and, and change it even in the middle of using it without going back to this feature. This basically means that when you go into an application, 
you now get by default kind of a smaller window that you can customize by dragging the corners around just like this. And you can swipe over to get those recent applications and you can drag more. And you see now I'm back in. So I can quickly go back and forth between these two applications. Now if I wanna resize this, I can just by dragging the corner over. And you see that the iPad automatically does that for me. If I wanna get into my dock, I can still swipe up and get to my dock. We'll go ahead and bring over a third application and drag this on top, tap. So now I have three apps open just like this and I can really customize these however I want. So it's really handy, it gives you a much more desktop view and feel that you're doing. And of course you can plug this into a display and it really takes it up the next level, which we'll talk about in a second. And then if you want to close an application, you tap the three dots at the top and click close, but you can also minimize it, which will just send it back to the side. So we'll minimize these, and then finally we will close this. And I can turn Stage Manager off, and I just have my normal windows again. And I can do my normal multitasking by dragging up an app, just like that. And you have the ability to drag multiple apps open, so I can have three apps open here, just like that. And if I wanted a picture in picture, I could also have a fourth app running, which is great. Now next I want to talk about the USB-C functions because that is huge with this iPad, of course. So this has USB and it does function as Thunderbolt, which is fantastic. Now with this, you can do several things. You can of course charge your iPad and charge it reversibly so you can plug your connector in on either directions and you can fast charge it if you provide a fast enough charger with this. So you have a charger for your MacBook or just you know a high powered charger, you can charge this really quickly. Secondly, you can charge other devices. So for instance, I will plug in a USB-C cable to my Apple Watch and I can charge my Apple Watch from my iPad and the new AirPods for instance also allow you to charge from the Apple Watch charger. So here from my iPad, I could charge up my Apple Watch, my AirPods, I can also charge up my iPhone. So you can see there's tons of ways of using this USB-C port for both charging your iPad and charging lots of other devices. Next, you can connect it to lots of USB-C accessories. So this includes anything from USB dongles to USB to HDMI ports. You can connect it to microphones, to keyboards, um, to uh, a camera. So you could plug this into your Sony camera and use it as a viewfinder or transfer files or a hard drive. Next, you can connect this directly to a monitor. If you have a monitor that accepts USB-C uh, or HDMI, you can plug that into the USB-C port on the iPad and turn that into Stage Manager. So you can use that monitor as a second display for your iPad's USB-C port. You can also connect this to hubs. So something like the Anchor Hub, which you can plug into your iPad. And all of a sudden, your iPad has USB and HDMI and SD card and more or more standalone accessories such as this SD card reader that you can plug directly into the iPad and of course transfer files, do all that kind of stuff. Okay, next is a feature in FaceTime. So this has the super wide angle camera that can kind of follow your face around and move with you as you're moving. So by default, center stage is turned on with this iPad, but if you're like me and don't like it, you can go to your control center, go to video effects and turn center stage off in FaceTime, Zoom and any other app that supports this. Now there's two ways of using this iPad in conjunction with your Mac, which is particularly nice with how big this is. The first is Sidecar, which is literally just turning your iPad into an extension of your Mac. So turning on Sidecar, if you have both devices signed into your same Apple ID and you have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and handoff turned on, with your Mac, so you can't use Ethernet on the Mac, unfortunately. Uh, you can turn this into a second display and just drag over files and documents and, and whatever and use this iPad as a Mac display. And you can even use your Apple Pencil to manipulate things, to draw on Photoshop or, or whatever, basically using it as a cursor and even using your fingers with uh, multi-touch gestures. But there's also universal control, which basically allows you to either use one set of keyboard and mouse, whether it be from your Mac from your iPad or external and belonging to really neither and use that same keyboard and mouse on both your Mac and your iPad without having to have two pairs of those to control both, which is awesome. Now, other cool stuff. There's now column sorting in the Files app. So if you're using this as kind of a desktop replacement, uh, the Files app is gonna be really great. Not only can you add Dropbox and Google Drive, but of course you have your iCloud Drive and you can also do lots of other things. 
But there's now the new column view. So if you go into column, um, and here you can sort by lots of different things. You have name, date, size, tags, um, and you have other view options as well. So this gives you a really thorough way of getting through all of your files and your documents on the iPad. And this feels much more like a desktop. There's now the option to convert the image. So say I have an image here, this JPEG, and I can go into the three dots. I can do convert image, and I can change it to whatever I want. Um, do large. So you can see just like that, you can convert images really easily uh, in this app. And then just one app that I like a lot is Libby. And Libby is an app that just syncs with your different library accounts and lets you borrow books for free on your iPad and audiobooks. You can sync it with the Apple Books or Kindle or whatever. And um, I have a bunch of books that I'm reading from the library uh, for free. That's a really great way of getting eBooks and audiobooks for free. So that's all I have for this video. Let me know your thoughts, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave those down below. And make sure to check out Moft for your best iPad origami stand and case solutions.